It's 2009 and this is Plants vs. Zombies. It's a top-down tower defense game that loads of people really like. It makes a lot of money for PopCap games, so they end up releasing it on a bunch of different platforms over the next few years, which further increases the game's popularity. But it's no longer 2009 and things have changed in the war between the plants and the zombies. What's up everybody, I'm Tom Christensen from GameZebo and this is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. It's been out for a while on Xbox One and Xbox 360, but it just recently released on the PC. As the guy from Sons of Anarchy likes to say, War. War never changes. Well, it did. And for the better. Garden Warfare is a step above and far beyond what I ever figured I'd see from the PvZ franchise. I know this change isn't going to be favored by everyone, but luckily for them, Plants vs. Zombies 2, the true sequel, recently released, and there is even more content for that on the way. But for those of you who are like me, and enjoy intense bouts of gameplay, you're going to enjoy Garden Warfare, and there's a lot about this game to enjoy. For one, the game looks and sounds amazing, thanks to the Frostbite engine, which is the same game engine used in the recent Battlefield games. The sights and sounds of combat in Garden Warfare are impressive. Shots ring out across the battlefield, plants squeal as they're blown apart, zombies mumble and grumble as they hobble along. There's always so much going on on screen, but it hardly ever gets overwhelming. Even with its fancy new coat of paint, Garden Warfare retains the same concept as the original. It's just way, way more expanded. For example, the tall nut can be placed to make a makeshift wall for the plants to take shelter behind. Players on the plants team can plant AI-controlled plants to defend objectives, while players on the zombie team can summon AI-controlled zombies to boost their numbers. The single player and co-op game mode is the most similar to the original Plants vs. Zombies in that it has players defending a central location from increasingly difficult waves of enemies. Even on the easiest game mode setting, things get pretty difficult, so bring your friends, because you'll need them. Multiplayer, on the other hand, is where you'll spend the majority of your time in Garden Warfare. Players are broken into two teams, and surprisingly, these two teams are the plants and the zombies. Each team has a handful of classes available from the start that each features their own unique abilities. There's the typical team deathmatch and capture the flag game modes, but there's also a game mode called Gardens and Graveyards, which tasks the plants with defending a location from the zombies for a set period of time. If the zombies overrun that location, the plants are pushed back to the next defensive point. If the zombies overwhelm the plants at the last defensive position, the zombies win. If the plants can hold out for the allotted amount of time, they win. It's a lot like the rush gameplay mode found in the recent Battlefield games. At the end of each round, players are rewarded with coins they can use to buy packs of random unlockables. Ranging from cosmetic additions like hats, goggles, and minor player model upgrades to the more valuable character pieces, which eventually unlock brand new characters to play as once all of the pieces are collected, collecting these stickers is the goal that all players will work towards. Now, if you have not already heard, the Xbox versions of Garden Warfare added in the ability for players to buy additional coins in order for them to unlock things faster. So yeah, that means EA is pushing in-game purchases in a game that costs $30 to begin with. That's going to annoy some people. In the game's defense, you never get the ability to choose what you get in the sticker packs. I could spend 10,000 coins and get some awesome rare gear, and someone who may pay the equivalent of 10,000 coins could end up getting a bunch of stuff they already have. It's a gamble. It's not pay to win unless you spend a stupidly large amount of money to eventually unlock everything. Probably hundreds of dollars. But hell, if you're going to sink hundreds of dollars into a game you like, then you should be rewarded with the coolest stuff. That's how hobbies work. If I sink hundreds of dollars more into my car than you do into your car, my car is going to be cooler. Because it'll have fire painted on it. And it's not like the game is stingy with the amount of coins it gives you. Even after losing a 10 minute game, I still received about 3,000 coins. 
you can get a decent pack for 5,000 coins and an even better one for 10,000 and 20,000 and so on. Garden Warfare is much more generous than, say, Hearthstone is. But then again, EA and PopCap already have some of your money to begin with, so they should be a little more generous. I'll have a full review of Plants vs. Zombies posted to GameZebo sometime this week. Once again, I'm Tom Christensen. Thanks for watching.